I'm Nick Poole, and this is a special resource developed for you and your youth group by CCYM News. We want you to be able to use this resource to help build on the experience you had at Rock. We know that making disciples happens locally, day by day, and week by week. And Rock can be a great first encounter for many people, and for others it can be like a booster shot. This resource is broken down into four sessions, which will correspond to the four sessions you experienced at Rock 2013. It is our prayer that this is a blessing to you and your youth group, and that it is a help to you as you engage in the journey of becoming followers of Jesus Christ. This is session three, Saturday evening at Rock 2013. Once Jesus was preaching, Jesus got up in this place. It was jammed, kind of like this. And when he got up, he just did something crazy. Jesus, crazy. Check this out. Jesus gets up and he goes, hey! You! Let me show you who I want. About halfway back, there's a girl. You have a green glowing thing in your head right here. You're sitting right there. Would you please stand up now? No, why'd you take it off? Uh-uh. You better get yourself up. I see you now. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. Wait, did you have something in your hair? Did you have something in your hair? You did? You're a boy? Okay, cool. You're a boy? How am I supposed to look at me? There's a 747 staring at me, all right? All right, young man. Hey, 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 look at me. Forget them. They don't know what they're talking about. Oh, by the way, don't listen to the people around you, son, because, listen, that's the way life is. If you listen to the crowd, you ain't never going to win. Sometimes you got to forget what the crowd's saying and keep moving. That was deep right there. All the leaders are like, that was good. Now, hear that. You still standing? Did he sit down? Stand up, man. All right, so the kid, Jesus was like preaching. I don't know him. I just picked him out. I know I don't know him because I called him a girl. So Jesus picked out this dude. He said, stand up. These guys stand up. And Jesus looked at him. The second thing he said was this. He goes, stretch out your hand. Cool. Okay, now look. Everybody clap for him. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. You can sit down. Dude, everybody on me. Check this out. That dude, that dude. The Bible says that he had a withered hand. It didn't work. So the Bible says that Jesus called this dude out and said, Hey, stand up! And he stands up and he goes, Stretch out your hand! He crippled. You don't be calling out crippled people. One of my best friends growing up had a crippled hand. He would do this right here. If you notice, he didn't do it. But he said, Reggie, I don't do that for me. I know what I have. I know. He said, I do it so other people don't, don't get offended. So I don't want to hurt nobody. So if I do it like this, they just think I'm normal. I could understand that. Check this out. When that man stood up and Jesus said, stretch out your hand. So now look, he had a choice. That man could show everybody what was normal, or he could show them what was crippled. What would you do? Oh, stop right there. Some of y'all like, I never thought about that. Man, Jesus did not come for what was normal. He didn't come what you had that was normal. He didn't just pick that man out random. He saw his crippled hand. And Jesus came to set the cripple straight, to take the broken and mend it, to take the messed up and make it look better so that the world can see who he is. So when that man stood up and Jesus said, stretch out your hand, that man's like, oh, snap. He going to heal my hand. And he stretched out the crippled hand. And the Bible says before he could even get that hand out, patow. 
it was as normal as the other hand. Tonight, are you going to sit there? Are you going to watch me on the screen upstairs? Are you going to pretend everything's right? Are you going to once in your life decide that you're not perfect and say, okay, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get in your wheelbarrow. Just push me. Show me. Help me. Change me. Love me. Do what you want to do in my life. Nobody can do that but you. I'm preaching good, y'all. I am dropping this one like it's hot. Look at me, look at me. That's what sin does. Sin makes you think it's your fault. It's your fault nobody loves you. It's your fault you're messed up. It's your fault and nobody can save you. You see what sin does, it makes you the loneliest brother and sister in the world. When you're lonely, when you're just so messed up, you think it'll never end. You think no one could ever save you. But I'm going to tell you there's a hero and his name is Jesus Christ. If you give him your life, you're not guilty anymore. Dude, no matter what people have said, remember I'm just the son of a prostitute. I don't belong here. You should never hear me speak or believe a word that I say. But it's because of Jesus Christ that he came down and he touched my life. And he said, Reggie, you're not guilty anymore. It's not your fault. You're not filthy anymore. That's what I thought. I thought I was dirty, so messed up that my own mom wouldn't want me anymore. But you got to look at me. Listen to me. I spoke at a school in September. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, public school. When I got done, this kid went home. Every day after school, he goes home and he stays with his grandma. When he walked in that day, he goes, Grandma, this dude came to school. He was funny. He made me laugh, but he also made me think. Great. He grew up in foster care. His mom could, had to give him away, but he said it didn't matter. He said it was a plan for his life. He said his past was his history, but his future is his destiny. And his grandma was doing dishes, and she said, who was it? He goes, his name's Reggie Dabbs. And she dropped the plate, and she fell on the floor. And he says, dial 911. And she would know, go get my purse. And my phone rang, and this lady goes, my grandson said that you were at a school. I said, how'd you get this number? She said, I had a school teacher when I was growing up. Before she died, she gave me this number and said, someday you're going to know when you need to call your son. And in September, my mom called me. On Christmas Eve, one of my sisters died. Alcohol abuse, liver failure. My brother just got out of prison not too long ago. The other twin sister, she also is dying of alcohol from alcohol abuse. So what I thought was my biggest messed up life was actually saving me. He saved me. And look, 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 look. And because I gave my life to Jesus Christ, the grandson said, he said his mama had to give him away. He said he didn't hate her. He said it was all good. That's why she called, because in Jesus, all things are new. Because I'm not guilty anymore. I'm not filthy anymore. I'm not broken anymore. Why? Because he says, you're pardoned. And then he gives me a new name. He changed my name. I'm not the child of a prostitute. I'm a child of the king. I'm not messed up, I'm put together. He can transform your life and make all things new. Upstairs, listen to me very close, everybody upstairs. In a moment, they're gonna stop to feed. And my friend Jeff Dio is coming, he's singing a song. Think of what I said, think of this sermon, because in three minutes, I'm coming up there, I'm gonna walk on stage and I'm gonna give an altar call. I'm going to give an altar call to give your life to Jesus Christ, to change your ways. Say, Jesus, here's my life. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get in a wheelbarrow and follow Jesus. So for the next three minutes, as Jeff sings this song, you just listen to the words. You sing along with them. Some of you have already made your choice. Some of you last night wanted to get right. Some of you doing the men's thing today said, I've got to get changed. Now's your moment. But you've got to make your move. Why? Because the Bible says if we confess him before man, he'll confess us before his father in heaven if we disown him before man he'll disown us i don't want to be disowned by god i've already been disowned by so many so upstairs the feed is about to stop and jeff is beginning to sing i'll be there in three minutes you guys can cut the feed right there are y'all ready you get to go first you're a sinner you're lost you're trying to live your life your own way 
you got to get right. Earlier today, I looked at some of all the men, and I said, if you're a man and you're addicted and you want Jesus to heal you today, stand up. And they stood up. I said, if you're a man and you're suicidal and you want Jesus to give you something to live for, stand up. And guys stood up. And I told them that tonight would be their chance. People, I am not going to play with you. You got 30 seconds. If you're a sinner and you're lost and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here and you say, okay, that's it. I've tried it my way and I'm lost. I need Jesus. If that's you, you got 30 seconds to get from your seat as close to this stage and this rail as you can. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, keep coming. I know you can't get all the way up, but you can get as close as you can. And that you stood out of your seat and tried to get to an owl shows the world that you're giving it all to God. You're giving it all to Jesus Christ. You're giving it all to him. He is the alpha, the omega. He is our beginning and our end. He is our first and our last. He's the champion. And here it is. The Bible says, and we read it tonight, if we confess with our mouth, so let's do that together. Everybody, stand. If you're in your seat, stand. Just put your hand on somebody beside you because you're touching somebody. We're family. We're in this thing together. I want you to look at me. I'm going to say this when I go upstairs, but I want you to know this. Do you know why I'm such a good speaker? Do you know why you believe in me so much? Because a long time ago, I decided I don't need to know your name to know your pain. I have my own. I don't need to know your home to know your shame. I have my own. But somebody loved me just the way I was. So I can love you just the way you are. Bottom line, I die for you. And I don't even know your name. So from here on out, when the devil whispers, nobody cares. You get to whisper back to him, Reggie did. And Reggie does. So let's say this prayer. Everybody say, Jesus, tonight, with my mouth, I confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus, tonight, in my heart, I get in your wheelbarrow. Push me where you want me to go. Take me where you want me to go. I'm all yours heart and soul thank you for dying for me thank you for rising again so I can have freedom I believe in you Jesus change me from the inside out transform me from the inside out in Jesus name I pray and everybody said amen now it begins now it begins now it begins. Now it begins. Now it begins. Sing this chorus. If you don't know the words, we'll teach it to you. You make all things new. Come on. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. In this session, Reggie talked about Jesus, who called out, stretch out your hand, to a man with a crippled hand. He could have reached out either hand, but he reached out the crippled hand and was cured. What do you bring to Jesus? Do you risk bringing to him what is broken in your life? Why or why not? The Bible says if we confess Jesus before man, he will confess us before God. 
Did you make a confession or commitment to Jesus on Saturday night at Rock? Discuss that, whether you did or not. Have you confessed Jesus before your friends at school? Discuss that, whether you did or not. Do you think it is harder in school or among friends outside of church to share your faith? Why do you think that is? Does having Jesus in your life help you? Do you think sharing Jesus might help others?